your bakery offers half and full sheets of batches of cakes for parties. You want to maximize profits on the sheet cakes. The oven at your bakery can make a batch of half sheets in five hours. It takes four hours to decorate that batch. The oven can also produce a batch of full sheets in four hours but requires only two hours of decorating. The oven is available for 24 hours per day of baking and the decorating room is available for 18 hours per day. You profit $35 on the batch of half sheets and $30 on the batch of full sheets. What should your bakery produce? Oh, it sounds like a great, great question for linear algebra, or at least linear programming. So I'm going to go through the steps and try to make sense of all this. Um, all the numbers are here, and you certainly can pause the video right now to make sure that you write down all those numbers. That way you can start this out. But uh, the first step that we want to do here is to make ourselves a table with all this information. So I'm going to come over here and talk about my half sheets, talk about my full sheets, and we're going to put up here what our constraints are. There's a certain number of cakes that we can actually make based on um, their oven time and their decorating time. So oven and decorate. And they only gave us two constraints in the problem that are oven and decorating time. Uh, the only other thing that we have here is the total time for each, meaning the total time that the oven can be on and the total time that we can be using the decorating room. I believe this said 18 hours for that decorating time. We'll go back for a second here. Uh, 18 hours of decorating time for uh, the maximum, 24 hours for the maximum of baking time as far as how long the oven can be on. Now we want to talk about each. We got five hours of baking, four hours of decorating for the half sheets. Five hours of baking, four hours of decorating. And four hours of baking for the full sheets with only two hours of decorating. So step two now we have to try to figure out uh, some equations based on this information. So the inequalities that we're going to set up is just like I had showed before, is that we want to go to up and down each one of these columns. Assign x and y, meaning this is going to be like the x-axis and the y-axis when we, actually, when we do start to graph these things. So first equation is going to look 5x plus 4y is less than or equal to 24. Again, the number of hours it takes for the half sheets, number of hours for the full sheets, total number of hours that we can actually bake. 4x plus 2y less than or equal to 18. Just taking these numbers going this way. If you want to, you can even stick x is in here, y is in here. That way you know you've got an x term and a y term and the total that we have to um, stay under to maintain our restraints. So we've got the 5x, 4y, 24. I'm going to rewrite this minus 5x on both sides divided by 4, because again we want to get this into that y equals equation that we like to graph. So all the y's that are less than or equal to 24 divided by 4, which is 6, and negative 5 halves, my 4 is skipping on me, and negative 5 fourths, I'm sorry, negative 5 fourths x. Same thing down here, we want to move the x over because that's just how we get these lines in a nice graphing form. We've got divided by 2y, so that you get those in terms of 1y. 1y, which is less than or equal to 18 divided by 2, which is 9. 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And now I've got two equations that I can graph on a coordinate grid. And again, that's going to help me develop that feasible region for our production. I'm going to go over to the next page, rewrite my equations. y is less than or equal to 6 minus 5 fourths x and y is less than or equal to 9 minus 2x. And we're just going to slap up a grid here in our um, cake shop. So 9 minus 2x, here's the 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, minus 2x, to go down 2 over 1, right about here. So we're going to throw that line. The lines, I mean, how ugly they look, it really doesn't matter. I don't want this to be perfect because I'm going to use my algebra to show all those important points anyway. 6 minus 5 fourths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five over four. So kind of like that. Now you can see on here, and this is when I'll get out some funner colors for us. You can see that this is one of our points of intersection. This is a point. This is a point, and this is a point. Or as far as the vertices of this um, quadrilateral go, feasible region starts out. Oh, I'll that one. Starts out right here. Goes up to those vertices, colors in all this space down here. And again, this feasible region just represents the possibilities of half cake or half sheet cakes and the full sheet cakes that we can actually produce in our bakery. Um, so we got to find each one of these coordinates because those are going to be the coordinates that we want to use for our um, profit function. X's and Y's. Zero, zero, that's one of them, but again, it doesn't count because it doesn't pay to make nothing. This one is our 6 minus 5x, so this coordinate itself is at zero, 06. This point down here is when our 9 minus 2x equals 0. So 9 minus 2x equals 0. I'm going to solve this for x. In some instances, a half of a unit wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Making a half a sheet cake, maybe that would make sense. We can use four and a half, or you can use four. I'm going to keep it at four and a half in this example because that'll give me a nice point back up here. Um, well, we know it's at zero, so 4.50, that's the xy coordinate. It's not going to affect our answer this time, but you, you know, maybe you want to keep it at four, maybe you want to keep it at four and a half. The last point of intersection we want to find is this one, and that's when these two lines actually equal each other, the 6 minus 5 fourths and 9 minus 2 x. So 6 minus 5 fourths x equals 9 minus 2 x. I'm going to add the 2 x. I'm going to subtract the 6, and this is kind of the whole point of chapter 5 is because we're finding these solutions. You've got, you know, that's 8 fourths and minus 5 fourths leaves me 3 fourths x equaling 9 minus 6, which is 3. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 thirds. You get that reciprocal, so that cancels. 4 thirds over here. Well, the 3's cancel out, so you're left with x equals 4. And I want to plug this back into either one of these two equations. I think this one might be the easier one to plug it into, because 9 minus 2 times 4, which is 9 minus 8, it's going to leave me with 1. 4, 1 now is the next coordinate point of this vertex. I'm going to get all these vertices on here. And last but not least, we want to check that profitability. So let's go back to our profits. Uh, it says that we make $35 on the half sheets and $30 on the full sheets. So our half sheets were x. So our profit equation is $35 on the half sheets, which are our x. $30 on the full sheets, which are the y. Now each of these xy's I want to replace with each of those vertices that we had found out. 0, 0, 0, 6, 4.50, and 4, 1. I believe that's the right one, 4, 1, yep. So plug in 0, 0, we get 0, plus 0, which equals 0. Not a lot of money being made there. 0, 6, well, 35 times 0. 30 times 6 is 180, so $180, so we're making some good money there. 4.5 times 35, no, it's 4.5 times 35. Let me get a calculator. And zero of this one, so that's 157.5 total dollars. Last but not least, we got our 4, 1. 4 times 35 is 140. 1 times 30 is 30. So it looks like our best production point is not to make any of the half sheets and making only full sheets for our bakery. Um, most of the times when we do these problems,